Happy Wednesday, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life. So glad to have you with us live today. Yes, we're live always, unless there's a hearing or something strange happening. I don't think there's a hearing that I'm aware of. No, no, there's not. A lot of people have been asking about Tex and whether he is still working at Channel 2. He is. But, but he's here today, folks. Yeah, he's had, he, you know, his social calendar is quite uh, full. His dance card is always full. And I feel like he's extra fluffy these days. Yeah, his belly rubbing calendar is very, very full. I also think he is excited because today, folks, is What's Your Problem Wednesday. I know. Is that why you wore pink? Actually, no. I, it just happened. I, I didn't realize that we were going to do this segment today and just kind of happened. Maybe I subliminally felt it. The stars aligned. Yeah. The pink reference, if you've seen Mean Girls, it's one of the only movies I've ever seen. It's, it's really a great film, right? It is, yeah. Which character would you be in Mean Girls? I don't know any of them by name. By name, I'm sure you've already picked one out by that tone. <laughs> no, it just I don't came know. To me. I, I mean, I've seen the movie multiple times, but I can't tell you like what their names are in the movie. Yeah, well, I'm, well, Lindsay Lohan plays Katie Heron, right? And she, there are these mean girls who sort of make fun of her, but then they invite her to sit with her, and through I don't know social annihilation, manipulation. They're actually really mean to her. And on Wednesdays, they wear pink. Today is Wednesday. Also, what's your problem? And we were so excited to share some of these comments. Yeah, and I think this all stemmed, I don't even know how long we've been doing this. I mean, the list is quite long because we get a lot of really ugly emails and messages. But um, it, it's just sort of started, I guess, by the producers listening to the phone messages or looking at your comments that are not you, you know, other people make. <laughs> The, the other they, people watching. Yes. Well, maybe they're not watching anymore because some of these are quite... Oh, I think they're watching. Yeah. It's interesting because we never set out to have this become a thing. And once we started reading some of these comments, I think a lot of you were probably just as shocked as we were. And we got such an overwhelming response from our viewers that you wanted to hear more of this and you wanted to see more of these. And I guess it is sort of unusual. I, I've never seen any show read mean messages on the air, but I think it's... I think there's some sort of lesson and at least a laugh to be taken. Well, there's always, I mean, look, let's, let's just face it. I mean, we're, we're targets, right? Because we're on TV and, you know, social media and people can make a comment or say anything, whether you like us or don't like us. And so it's just the, the, um, the energy and the amount of effort that goes into some of this is quite astonishing. People will create fake accounts, right? And I think some of the Twitter comments, Twitter comments we're going to read today were from fake accounts, right? And you can always spot a fake account because they maybe they have one follower, they were recently created. So it always astounds me that people go out of their way to create a fake account just so they can bully people online. I also think it's hilarious that people don't think we know how to track them down. Right. We know who you are is essentially what we're trying well, to say. Well, and we're not we're not going to show up at your door. <laughs> Let's oh, I be will. Honest. I will. I have it all mapped out. I'm going to bring you some cookies and some milk. Some hope sour to, grapes. Hope to, no, I, I want to <laughs> spread kindness into the world, and I want to help people have but a better But some day. say spreading kindness into the world, we shouldn't be doing what we're doing today. It's a bit controversial. Should we not do it? No, I, we have the time to fill. So w maybe next time we won't do it, but today we will. And, and honestly, I, I didn't read any of these, so I have no idea what's coming. Okay, well, let's get to it. Did you read some of them? No. Okay. Cue the music. I'm going to start. This was a message we received, I guess, last week because we were chatting about how dirty your bag was. And so I said, hey, let's, you know, grab your bags. And our producers brought us our bags. We looked through. The comment was, digging through your bags is really boring. If you only had a script of something relevant to Houstonians, thus the name Houston Life. Angela on Twitter, thank you so much for your comment. You're just going to leave it there? I mean, your bag was kind of boring. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. No, I mean, Sometimes I... Sometimes you're boring. <laughs> <laughs> well, which is why I asked to look through your bags. I don't understand where this is going. Okay, so the next comment is, uh, this one is, I've been a viewer since day one, but I'm finding it difficult to watch lately. If I were playing a drinking game and took a sip every time Derek and Courtney said, right, I'd be falling down drunk. Also, please stop talking with food in your mouth. Mm -hmm. I know y'all make fun of people who criticize you, but constructive criticism can be helpful. Right? <gasps> she put that in. So that's from, that was an email <laughs> from was... Diane. That was not a Courtney ad lib. Do we say right? 
uh, often, frequently? I guess. Enough to annoy Diane. Do we say that word a lot? Do we? I'm, I'm asking our team right now. Do we? No. no. I don't know. Diane doesn't like it. I feel like Diane's written in before. Or am I confusing her with somebody else? It could be just a different Diane. Oh, maybe. I have an aunt Diane. Yeah. But she's nice, so she didn't, she didn't write She it. didn't write that? No. No. But also, it is interesting. Obviously, there are things that we all do we don't realize we're doing, right? And so... Right? Now I'm going to start <laughs> taking notes. Did I just say it? You did. So, Diane, I'm going to send you a thank you note because the word right should absolutely never be spoken. Right. I'm just writing. Write yourself writing, I'm writing W-R-I-T. Yeah, not R. Writing a note. Here's the other question. Not say right she doesn't like that we talk with our mouth full. So sometimes we take bites of food because people will email us and say, well, why aren't you eating the food that you're making, you know, on set? So we have to taste it and we can't have... <laughs> dead air is what we call it. So there will be time. We try to time it where maybe you take a first bite, I take a sip, or you take, you know, we, we try to time that. But quite honestly, if we're eating and having a reaction, my bad, Diane. I also have to say to our guests, and we have a couple of these cooking segments today, they're the hardest segments to do on television. They really the are. The most difficult because, yeah. and I don't mean for us, I mean for the guest as well, because imagine when you're cooking at home, imagine if you're cooking at home in your kitchen and you have an audience, right? And they can't right? smell the food. <laughs> Thanks, Diane. This I, is such I, a fun I game. Say it. I just wish I had a drink like you do. Because she said if we were playing a drink, a drinking don't, game. Don't you say it as well? I think that message was directed at both of us. I'm sure it was. Right? But today, you're ta adding the tallies. Anyway, food segments are very <laughs> difficult to do. And viewers have asked me about these segments before. Because how do you keep the food warm? If you're a viewer, you can't smell it. So it's our job to try to convey how it smells, how it tastes. It is tough to convey how something tastes. Oh, it tastes good. It's spicy. It's sweet. It's tricky. It really is tricky. And for the guests, they have to time how the food is all laid out and cooked, plus the pressure of having an audience. It's and, tough. And for us to like it. Because what if we taste it and we really don't like it? I've always liked the food I have here. too, but I'm just saying... What if it were really bad? Absolutely. Do you remember that time I ate that can of wet chili and mm -hmm. you thought it was mm -hmm. dog food? That was so gross. <laughs> That was so gross. I feel like I should have kept the joke going longer and never actually told you. Ugh. When I was a kid, we used to have assemblies where the Humane Society would come and they would teach us about how to care for pets. And then they would hand out pet food samples, the dry ones, and I would eat the dry ones just to show off for my friends. I thought it was cool. <laughs> it's like the perfect party, party gift. Well, yeah, because it was like snack time, but better. You Did know? you like the way it tasted? No. Of course not. Okay. Let's get to another comment. Yeah. This one came from Twitter from a totally real account with one follower. It reads, <laughs> the worst show on TV is Houston Life. I can't stand it. From Crispy Biscuits 8. I checked, she still has one follower this morning. She does. And I think a fake photo. So again, someone went out of their way to... It's a lot of work. It is. It's a lot of work. And granted, sometimes the show's bad. We can't help it, people. We're human like you are. Right. I know. It's hard to believe. This next one, I, I just saw the top line, and I this is going to be an interesting conversation. So this one is, stop talking over each other. Finish, just, finish your sentences. Answer the questions you bring up. That's from John on Facebook. John, clearly you've never had a conversation with your friends or a woman. Right? Or a woman. Yeah, because I feel like girlfriends kind of... Everyone our, does. Right? We're having our conversation. You jump in, you finish each other's sentences. That's what a great conversation is. I wasn't ready for this today in my headspace for these comments today. Really? Yeah, it's just, you know when life happens, you've got stuff happening in your own life and then you hear just people being kind of nasty for no reason? Ugh. But it has nothing to do with you and oh, everything to do with them. I, you know, it's just, it's that I'm not being very funny about it, and I guess that's why. So I just feel the last time I actually searched for a random email on a television show was never. <laughs> I don't. 
I don't it know. is true. There are times when I'm watching TV and I think, oh, I don't love this. And there's a, there's a really amazing solution. As my friend Lewis would say, click, click. Mm -hmm. It's called the remote. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, it would never occur to me to send someone a nasty message. I don't know. Maybe I have in my past life. Maybe. And this is karma all coming back, right? <laughs> all right, so we're going to lighten the mood. We're going to have a lot of fun today on Houston Life, including a very special guest, Tillman Fertitta. Of course, you know him as the CEO of Landry's, owner of the Houston Rockets and Golden Nugget Casino. He's going to give us the 101, the 411, rather, on what to expect for Saturday's Nights of MoMA's Grand Night Parade. It is, of course, part of Mardi Gras Galveston celebration. Also, some business advice from his brand new book, Shut Up and Listen. And listen to this. We have a seafood masterclass with the man that's known as basically the uh, fishmonger czar. Oh, cool. Chef Tinny Finn, Flynn is here in uh, New Orleans, GW Finn's restaurant and co-owner and chef. He's going to be cooking up shrimp sautéed in barbecue butter. What else do you need? Goat cheese grits. And he also has a new book, Deep End of Flavor, helping people who are basically scared to cook seafood at home. I'm one of those people. It is a little trickier, right? Because yeah. you don't want to overcook it and have it become fishy or rubbery. So or how to buy down. fish, that I think is not my forte at all. Don't worry, yeah. don't worry. Have I'm faith. excited about we this. We can segment. all do it. Coming up next, five strategies to help you eat healthier this new year. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Transitioning over to a healthier lifestyle might not be easy, but our next guest says even small changes can add up to a huge impact on helping us eat clean. And here to help us incorporate healthier eating habits without sacrificing flavor is chef and owner of Lavishly Seasoned, Mariah Scott. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Your spread looks amazingly beautiful, also colorful. Yes. Because healthy doesn't have to be boring. No, it shouldn't be boring, right? Otherwise, we probably wouldn't want to do it, so we have to keep things exciting. And I love that you started off with basically staying on track with the word fresh. Yes, fresh. So when you think of fresh, you think of healthy, you think of food. So it's an easy way just to remember my five techniques or five ways to implement fresh ideas um, into your diet and into your lifestyle. And there they are on the screen right now, frozen foods, raw foods, the list goes on. We're yes. going to break each one down, starting with the frozen foods. And this is something that maybe people don't immediately think of. Mm -hmm. They're less expensive, mm -hmm. equally nutritious, yes, right? absolutely. So of course, all frozen food are not on the same level. I have a few favorites that I usually gravitate towards. Um, um, and fr our frozen fruit comes in handy when you don't have those items that you need for a recipe or you can't run to the store. It's something you can keep in your freezer that's easy accessible. And it doesn't rot like fresh yes. produce can in the fridge. Yes. I always have a bag of frozen kale. Oh, oh Because oh, I can throw that kale. in. Yes, girl. I love that. Yes, I oh can add gosh. it into soups and right? different things. And the great thing about frozen is it keeps all the nutrients. They usually pack it at the peak of freshness, so you're getting all those nutrients as well. Fabulous. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the R, which is raw foods. Mm -hmm. So, generally when people think of raw they think of whole fruits whole vegetables you know I'm on a raw diet but raw doesn't mean you have to just eat an orange or an apple a day raw can simply mean cold-pressed olive oil which mm. is raw um, also fermented products like kimchi mm -hmm. kombucha which is one of my favorites raw yogurt um, and uh, sauerkraut is also considered raw um, raw is just something that's not processed over a certain temperature so all of those items you could eat a handful of walnuts and yeah that would implement new raw um, foods into your diet and things like the kombucha and the kimchi, mm -hmm. this might freak some people out if you've never tried it, but the reason you say it's important to have these is because they have probiotics, yes. enzymes that are oh going to help your body with nutrients yes. and digestion. Di I'm so glad you said that, yes. So pro probiotics are great for digestion health. It's good for your gut. So um, with probiotics full of enzymes and just good bacteria, that's good for your body. And I love also the easy snack solution because that avoids sort of sticking your hand in the cookie jar oh or the gosh. potato chips. You know how many mistakes I've made trying to find something quick and easy? Yes. So staying healthy and being on track, you need something that's quick, something you can go to. So the E in our fresh um, is going to be easy, having easy snacks. Uh, one of my favorite, and I think underrated, uh, snacks is an apple. Love uh, it. It's apple season right now, so go to your grocery store. They have tons of apples. 
I mean, we have, I mean, look at all these apples we have here. We have green, red, Fuji. Um, and one of my favorite tricks is using a little apple slicer. Actually, Derek, do you mind? It saves so much time. Do you guys see this at home? <laughs> Amazing tool. Yep, oh, look at that. Look at that. Right? Look at all those slices. You can have a simple, easy snack in less than 30 seconds. Pair it with some peanut butter. You got your protein and you have your fiber. And that's a great pre-workout snack. Ooh, or if yes. your kids are athletes and have to go to a Absolutely. practice or something. Yeah. As long as they can have that nut butter, it's very good for yes, you, too. Yes, Also an almond butter, right? I love almond butter. I do, too. So delicious. Uh -oh. So good. I'm about to eat with my mouth full. Uh -oh. I better take over. Why don't you take over seasoning? <laughs> and this is a critical category because yes. sometimes it's not the food that we're eating right. that's unhealthy. Mm -hmm. It's what we're putting on it, all the sodium. Yes, exactly. Sodium is key. So, sure, you can have a healthy salad. You can have healthy vegetables. But if you're loading it with salt and uh, fats and saturated fats, it kind of defeats the purpose. So, um, the S is for seasoning. So, when you do season your food, try to incorporate fresh herbs. We have some basil here, some fresh Italian parsley, and finish it off with a little bit of fresh citrus. That would just kind of brighten up your dish, and it gives you the opportunity to add more nutrients into your diet. I love that, mm -hmm. and it looks so beautiful, yes. too. Good mm -hmm. reason to have some basil uh, in your backyard. You know, too, if you don't have any fresh uh, yeah. ingredients, have a go-to herb in your cabinet, like a herb blend or something that doesn't have salt, so it's easy accessible. You can just grab it. Um, I have here Geneva's Love, which is my um, herb and spice blend, salt-free. Uh, actually, if you don't mind, um, Courtney, grabbing these. Yeah. I actually roasted some sweet potatoes. Oh, it's wonderful! A quick little technique that you can do at home. Okay. Instead of frying French fries, roast some vegetables. It helps to caramelize and get the sweetness out of the vegetables. So just toss these in this little bowl. Perfect. And we can actually, uh, Derek, we can add some of that cold pressed olive oil, a little drizzle on oh, there, sure. and just top it with some fresh herbs. Great. So it's simple, easy. You're incorporating raw. You're incorporating herbs and drizzle. sweet potatoes, which are loaded in beta carotene. Um, yeah. Look at you. Perfect. You look like a professional. Well, no, You've done girl. This before? No, I, I've, I've seen you work. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this, which actually brings us to our next point, which is H in fresh, which uh, stands for homemade. And anything that you mm. make at home is probably going to be a little bit fresher than if you were going through a drive. -in. And healthier, too, right? And yeah. healthier, yes. Those are so good. So, mm -hmm. we all crave certain things, right? And the number one thing that we normally get out, the polls say, is hamburger. Burger and fries? Yes! Knew it. Burger and fries, right? So why not make it at home? You know, why not have a burger night at home where you can still kind of have that guilty pleasure? Right. But decrease the sodium, decrease your saturated fats, and have a healthier. You know what's in it when you make it at home. Absolutely. There's no, nothing hidden. So no. you you have your burgers here. Oh, my gosh. Yes, I do. So uh, this is my Geneva's Love burger. Um, I also have a falafel burger. If you're a plant eater or trying to, you know, stay off of meat a little bit, I also have a, a Beyond Meat, which is a plant-based burger. It's one of my go-tos for a plant-based. Wonderful. And I love all the bread, too. And by yes. the way, Geneva's Love is your inspiration. Yes. Your lovely grandma yes. is who you started cooking with many years ago. Yes, ma'am. That is uh, Geneva Johnson. Um, she was the inspiration behind the spice. Everything she did was with, with love. Uh, it's made, what made her food taste good. It brought people together, which I believe when it comes to food, it should bring us all together. Um, we should have fun and just enjoy fresh, delicious ingredients. And there's a picture of your grandmother right there. There she is. Sure Favorite she's color is very blue. Very proud. Aww. Yes. Well, Maya <laughs> Scott, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you so much for having me. That was delicious, those fries. Awesome. I'm going to make those at home. In the meantime, if you'd like to learn more about Mariah's cooking classes and catering, you can visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. And still ahead from restaurants to casinos, even an NBA team owner, Tillman Petita shares his business advice, plus the U of H alum will give us a preview of this year's Mardi Gras Galveston celebration. And later, a cooking lesson from New Orleans seafood master, Chef Tenny Flynn. We'll be right back. Lee, right now. Vein Clinics of America is the oldest, largest, most experienced vein treatment center in the country. And it's devoted to providing the highest quality of outpatient care. And I am here with the vein expert himself, Dr. Hansen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm excited to be here and to get a little bit more knowledge about the treatments that you guys do at this clinic. First of all, tell me a little bit about Vein Clinics of America. Vein Clinics of America is probably the oldest uh, vein clinic of its kind in the country. We've got something like 70 clinics scattered throughout the nation. We have two here in Houston, one here in the Woodlands, and one uh, on 59 in Kirby. You guys focus in on one as opposed to kind of a variation of different things. Correct, correct. All we do is take care of veins, from spider veins to, to varicose veins to a whole host of other issues with veins. So how is Vein Clinics of America different from those other treatment centers, aside from focusing in on veins only? Well, we have a very uh, sophisticated uh, protocol in taking care of our patients. I'm a heart surgeon by training. 
and trained at Baylor, and pretty much we took care of every blood vessel below the skull, including veins. Despite that fact, I still took like a three-month uh, course just so we could learn some of the newer techniques. And I think it was, uh, you know, that's what we do on all of our uh, physicians, uh, vascular technicians, and our nurse practitioners. Let's talk about vein disease. What is it, and how can someone tell if they have it? One of the earliest manifestations are varicose veins, which are the big, lumpy, bumpy veins on your legs that are oftentimes painful. Uh, they cause restless legs, uh, leg cramps, swelling, burning, itching. And you can and experience these ankle, back of the knee? Yes, and, and the, some people, they, their legs just fatigue easily. You know, the risk factors are anybody that's on their feet all day, uh, pregnancy in women, and biggest one is heredity. Family. Yeah, what about shoes? Heels? Uh, some people say that heels may contribute because what happens is the heels are up so high that it takes your calf muscle out of the loop, mm -hmm. and so your calf muscle gets weak, and so your calf muscle's not squeezing to move the blood up. So how is vein disease treated? Well, we have, I tell people the reason you have vein issues is that the veins have valves. This veins strain blood from your feet back to your heart, whereas arteries take blood to your feet. So what happens, veins have valves. And so this is a vein wall, these are the valves, they open and close. For whatever reason, heredity, pregnancy, uh, and being way overweight is another issue. The veins dilate, and after pregnancy, they don't come back together, so the valves don't touch. Blood goes both ways. So if blood don't, goes both ways, the pressure that from your heart down to your feet is tremendous. 20% of people with really bad varicose veins get a sore at the ankle, we call it an ulcer, because the pressure's so great against the skin, it blocks arteries from bringing oxygen to the skin, skin dies and they get a sore, uh, which is pretty painful. It sounds very dangerous. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's more than just cosmetic. I mean, it's actually functional, and it's a quality of life. It affects the quality of life. I have so many people come back and say, you know, I don't wake up, I'm, I'm not kicking my spouse all night because uh, I don't have restless legs anymore. My legs don't feel fatigued, I have more energy. I feel like I can run a marathon now. I can't do that anymore. And the amazing thing is we can do all this in the office. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go to the hospital. And just think about the cosmetic side of it. It's a confidence booster. Oh yeah, we take care of the cosmetic end too. So we do a whole spectrum of vein disease from varicose veins all the way to spider veins. So what are the long-term effects of getting the diseased veins treated? Well, I tell people that the veins that we're working on are superficial veins. This is a duplicate set of veins because you have a deep system that's the important set. And I tell patients, don't worry about it. This is just like your appendix. We all have an appendix. You don't need an appendix, it causes trouble. These veins we don't need, they cause trouble. Mm -hmm. So we can basically, instead of taking them out like we used to, we basically destroy them in place body takes over, breaks it down, and absorbs them. You come back a year from now, you can't find them, you're gone. Are there any other ways that these veins can present themselves? The vein disease can come out another way? Uh, well, we see probably 25% of the people I see with only spider veins have bigger veins that issue. And the problem with that is if you were to treat the spider veins without evaluating the other veins, the success rate for treating your spider veins drops to less than 40%. So what we always do, we do just a, a quick scan, there's no charge for it. We do a quick uh, ultrasound, to make sure there's no other big issues that looks okay. We know we can treat their spider veins with a high degree of success. Personal question, will vein disease present itself more so in men or women, or is it not a gender? It's more in women, just because I think of pregnancy. Uh, it's probably, uh, we see amazingly about 40% of our patients are men. We don't cure them, we fix what you have at the time. It's an ongoing thing, you wanna stay ahead of it before it becomes an issue. Is this something that's affected by diet, exercise? Uh, I think weight is a big part of it. So, you know, walking is one of the best things you can do. If you want to run, jog, that's that's great too. But uh, keeping your weight down, because the more pressure you have up here pushing on those veins, it's all transmitted downstream. Well, vein disease is preventable and treatable here at Vein Clinics of America. Dr. Hansen, thank you very much for all the information. And if you'd like more information on Vein Clinics of America, just log on to veinclinics.com. Tons of great information. Thanks so much, Lauren. After the break, from one restaurant to a multi-billion dollar empire, we sit down with Tillman Fertitta to talk about his latest book, business ventures, and of course, this weekend's Mardi Gras Galveston celebration. We'll be right back.
4,000. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you caught us whispering during the commercial breaks there. That, of course, is Houston Rockets owner Tillman Fertitta on your screen right now. A successful businessman and world leader in dining, hospitality, entertainment, and gaming industries. And now, check this out. He can add New York Times bestselling author to his impressive list of accomplishments. Here with more in his book and a preview of what we can expect from this year's Mardi Gras Galveston celebration. Tillman Fertitta in studio. Welcome. Hey, it's good to be here again. Great it's to good. have you. It's, it's been a minute. The last time Tillman was on the show, we were in the mall. I don't know if you That's remember that right. studio That's there right. in the yeah. mall, yeah. but yeah. welcome to Studio B. You brought some uh, accessories here and some giveaways. We're going to tell you about how you can win one of these caps this weekend, but I want to chat about the book. Congrats the, on the book. It's been great. It's been a lot of fun touring all over America. And uh, gosh, I thought I was done, and I still have a, a, a few signings to do. Shut up and listen. There's the, uh, the copy of the book right there on your screen. That's an attention-grabbing title. What's the purpose of the, this book? Is it really to inspire other entrepreneurs out there? It, it really is. You know, so many people come up and say, what are your biggest secrets? And, and uh, Harper's really did it right because I always wanted to write a tell-all book one day. And they said, no, we want to really know your business tools that you use and how you separate yourself. And so it kind of is on point. And, and I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, I've had just great feedback from it. Reviews are great on it. And if, if you read this book, you walk away a smarter person, and, and uh, I, I, I love doing it. I had no idea that I would enjoy doing it so much, but it's not about crazy stories and doing deals with people. It's really the tools to be a great entrepreneur or just the way you live your normal life. It's a lifestyle book, too. So You're a household name in and around Houston, and there may be some people who look at you and think, oh, well, this was easy. This just happened overnight. You have such a great story, though, of how this all happened. You were working shelling shrimp in your in your father's restaurant growing up. Your your career is a result of decades of very hard work. Yeah, you know, it, it it really is. And people say, well, how do you make it happen? You got to remember, I've been doing this since the 80s and the late 70s, and and went into business for myself. And and I watched so many people come and go because I've been around for, you know, it tells you how old I am, how, you know, how many decades I've been around now and, and, and been somewhat of a player in the city. And, uh, but it's, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a great ride and it's, it's great to home base everything in Houston and be such a part of the community. So humble, somewhat of a player in Houston, <laughs> right? Can you believe that? Also, I think it's so cool to think about you as a kid being a lifeguard there on the beach in Galveston, <laughs> where Pleasure, Pleasure Pier sits now, right? That Which you so, also own. Yeah, that's so funny. And, uh, you know, where where the Hilton and the Convention Center is was right in front of the neighborhood I grew up in, in Adler Circle. And then where the San Luis is, we used to go up that bunker and play. And then where the Pleasure Piers, I was a lifeguard. It's, it, it is funny to, to have all these things that, that you used to, you know, you have all these memories as a little kid because we didn't move to Houston until I was in junior high school. But you are so invested in the city and you've always given back uh, the Rockets. You've got a great little giveaway that's happening. As we mentioned, check out these baseball caps. I want to turn this one around so you can see what's on the back. That is a Mardi Gras 2020 cap right there, folks. And Tillman, you're going to be tossing these from some of the floats at the parade this weekend? Yeah, you know, everybody loves Mardi Gras and, and giveaways and the medallions or whatever. So we decided to start a tradition this year and off of... Uh, my four floats, which is the Landry's float, the Golden Nugget float, and the Fertitta family, and of course the fire truck, the Landry's fire truck. We're going to throw 3,000 of these uh, this year, and every year we're going to do this, and it'll have a totally different look. This is a look that you can't get in any stores or online, and and uh, it has Mardi Gras. And next year you'll have Mardi Gras. Gosh, I've already got a great idea for 21 too, and uh, so this is, and it's a really good hat. We're not throwing some cheap ass hat so so uh so uh, this is something that'll be great for fans that we will love seeing on people all over town so. that's going to become a collector's item <laughs> and in case you haven't been to mardi gras down in galveston we do it a little differently than new orleans does this is a family friendly event great for all ages right and what's the plan for this weekend i mean how early do we need to get down there to get a good spot you know the, 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 the weather's supposed to to be pretty nice it'll be a little chilly you know in the 50s which but when 
when you're around a bunch of people. There will be 250,000 people at this parade because the weather is going to be decent. And uh, the floats are great. It's going to be great. It's so exciting that it's going to be telecast live this year on Channel 2 from... Uh, from uh, 6.30 to uh, 8, and that'll be a lot of fun, and I know you're going to be in the booth doing a great job. And, I am uh, <laughs> so excited, Zillman. Ever since I was a kid, I have loved parades, and I think that this parade is, again, unlike any parade you've probably seen before, and I think it's great that growing up in Galveston, you have found such a way to remind people that it's a great place to visit, you've kept people in business, and also this event, we can't overlook the fact that when it comes to the economics of the this event every year. We're bringing more people to the island to ensure that those small businesses and large businesses are continuing to do well. You know, absolutely. And and the, the, the grand the Moments Grand Night Parade is just a great parade. It's 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 great. It's a it's really a great family Mardi Gras. And 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 the city's done a great job of, of making that what it is. And and not that I don't love the New Orleans Mardi Gras, but this 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 Mardi Gras has a little bit for everybody, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And before I let you go, uh, I got to ask about the Rockets. How has that ride been for you so far? Oh, it's been a great ride. I mean, we won a lot of basketball games, and uh, you know, you know, one of the things that I, I agree so much with with my staff over there is to keep it exciting. And uh, uh, right now our small ball is keeping it exciting. And, and you just have two of the greatest players to ever play the game and, and James and Russell. And uh, we're excited about the rest of this year. And, uh, you know, we think we're going to make a really good run at it. So uh, let's just keep our fingers crossed and hope we can hit those shots when we need to. I think we can do it with you at the helm. Anything else on your list to buy? I know it's a very personal, rude question, but I just asked it. I'm always working on something. You'll probably hear something the next couple of days. What? I, I'm always working on something. So. Next couple of days? Always. Tillman, uh, give us a hint. I can't. Steak. Steak. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Well, Tillman, it's great to see you. Thank you. And I'll see you this weekend. Yes, look forward to it. It'll i got to get of one of those caps, one of 3,000. A reminder, by the way, you can watch our coverage of the Knights of Momus Parade live right here on KPRC Channel 2 starting at till, as Tillman said, at 6.30 p.m. until 8 on Saturday. I will be there along with my colleagues, KPRC News anchor Christine Noel, Chief Meteorologist Frank Billingsley, and reporter Lauren Kelly. It's going to be a great time, so tune in, and even, even better, join us on the island, right? Absolutely. Thanks again, Thanks, Tillman. Appreciate we'll be right back. Get it delivered. Well, you know, there's no reason to shell out big bucks at a seafood restaurant when you can make it at home. This versatile protein is easier to prepare than you might think. And here to give us a seafood master class is GW Finn's co-owner and chef, Tenny Flynn. Great to see you. Well, thank you for having us here. And I'm glad you prefaced, you know, your, your comments that way because seafood really is the easiest protein to cook. I tell people if you've got the equipment and skill set to fry an egg, okay. you can cook a piece of fish in about the same amount of time. And it's better for you. You're also known as the fishmonger czar in the south and sometimes I feel this way buying fish can be a little intimidating it's really uh, and and I make the analogy is I, I'm a terrible mechanic I don't pretend to be I have a mechanic I trust and you need to develop that same sort of relationship with a fishmonger okay and tell them when they do good tell them when they do bad bring them cookies <laughs> and at least they'll tell you what came in that day and also when you're shopping uh, don't be too wedded to one particular variety. Look for the best thing in the case and then base your meal about around that. Sort of like if you go to the farmer's market and you pick out the nicest vegetables. It's exactly the same. Okay, and today we are doing, you're going to do a barbecue shrimp, is that right? Right, and, and I'm going to start off, uh, and I have this, oh, uh, electric stoves. I know. Better than it's an the induction. the studio. Right? <laughs> well, it's, uh, I'll just, you know, and, and the people that say they can't cook on electric stoves, uh, you know, in a restaurant, you cook everything on high, and then you sort of re regulate the heat by moving it around. We're going to toast a little bread. Okay. And then I've got some uh, some grits that were cold and roll up in a roll. These are the goat cheese grits. Oh, beautiful. And we're just going to fry them. And if we if we do everything right, they won't stick. Okay. But if they stick, it's okay. Okay. We're not going to hold it against us. And the do butter the butter's getting a little bit brown. Okay. And we want it to brown. Or? It's okay if it does. Okay. Um, and can I ask, are you using unsalted butter or red? No, I'm using. I'm a salted butter guy. Okay. 
Okay. Um, the only thing I use unsalted butter for is uh, buttercream icing. Okay. Well, I'm going to okay. leave that to the experts. All right. This this is kind of hot. I'm going to go in. I'm going to go ahead and cool off my pan a little bit with these wild caught American shrimp, and uh, and that really is the only kind of shrimp that we should be buying. I mean, there are plenty of great Texas shrimp, uh, farm-raised shrimp are raised under conditions that don't really bear close scrutiny. Okay. And if you'd be so kind as to open that bottle of champagne for oh, me. Well, I usually, think I do that. Usually I use beer for that. Okay. I forgot to buy the beer today. Oh, okay. And, uh, and so, I don't know who, sh who belongs to that champagne, but they're gonna be missing it when they look for it. Uh, it, it might be mine. I think it's my lunch. So that's okay. I well, agree it, with that. It's, it's, we're using it in a good cause. And what, <laughs> I, what I've got here is a compound butter, and that's kind of a restaurant trick for uh, standardizing all the ingredients. Okay. Um, I'm glad I'm your sous chef today. There we go. Well, you didn't. I, I was looking forward to that celebratory noise. You I know. know. We're, we're going into Mardi Gras weekend. I you know. know. You know what? That's a big faux pas, isn't and, it? And, and, I just didn't want well, to. Well, you're obviously an expert. <laughs> Might have opened one or two of those before. <laughs> okay, talk to me about the time of cooking shrimp because these these babies cook pretty quickly. They cook don't fast. They? I'm going to get a little bit of color on one side, and then I'm de I'm going to deglaze with the with the champagne. And it's very important that I have a little bit of liquid in the pan when I add the butter. Okay. And that, because the liquid controls the temperature, you know, it can't get hotter than boiling. Um, once the liquid evaporates, it gets hot very quickly and it will break the butter. Okay. And so. So not quite opaque. There's still a little, not quite cooked all the way. Oh, that's, look, look right? at that golden that's brownness. That's so beautiful. Look at that golden brownness. Mm. We did so well. So we're just gonna let that saute a little bit longer and then the butter, right? I'm gonna add the liquid, liquid let, it cook, first. let it reduce for a bit. Okay. Uh, and then while there's still some liquid in the pan, I'm, I'm gonna mount the butter in there and make a nice creamy sauce. Okay. And, and this recipe is in the book. Um, this book, uh, The Deep End of Flavor, uh, it's not a chefy book. It's like a, a technique book for the home cook to take right. the fear. I signed it sometimes. Don't fear the fish. <laughs> I love it because so many people are afraid of cooking fish at home. It really is, and I'm I'm definitely one of those. The cover here of your book is beautiful, and for those that don't know, uh, GW Finns, of course, is New Orleans' premier seafood restaurant, uh, top ten best finding restaurant, fine dining restaurants in the country. That's by TripAdvisor. Open Tables 100 Best Restaurants in America. And you dive and spear your own fish? Well, I, that's kind of a PR thing. I, I, okay. love to, I love to put chef shot on the menu, but it really it actually doesn't happen very often. But is um, this picture you? Is that oh, you? That is me. Boy, that's an old picture. I had dark hair in that picture. <laughs> I would have never. I just thought it was the, you know, the lighting. Well, the water. Every everybody looks the same with a rag in their mouth, <laughs> and everybody, the audio is all the same too. You know, the, exactly. But I do, I do spear fish, um, and, and lionfish is one of my particular interests. You know, that's an invasive uh, fish to this hemisphere. So you see, when I add the butter, I've got some liquid in there. Right. That, that's going to control the heat a bit, and I'm just going to break it up and stir it in. Kind of make a creamy salt, just a little butter. Oh, you know, just a, a tad bit. That's what I love about it. A Orleans. natural fat eaten by people for many thousands <laughs> right. of years. You know? <laughs> so we're going to let this thicken a little bit. Remember, you can also use beer for this if you don't want to have your champagne or, or if you're a beer person or even, or even water. water. Yes, if you're if you're on a gluten-averse. There you thing. go. And that is going to plate over the risotto. No, the, this is the I'm uh, sorry, the, the grits. grits. The grits. Got our grit cake there. Oh, and I, I'm so proud of myself. I got it there in one piece. Beautiful. Take that off the heat. And we're going to let you plate that. By the way, you can catch Chef Flynn, get that, catch him, at Central Market tonight. We'll be, he's going to be teaching a seafood cooking class from 6.30 to 8.30. We will also have this full recipe from today on our website of HoustonLife.tv. I can't wait to dig into this dish. Chef, this looks fantastic. And we've got almost enough for the crew. Absolutely. Please come back and see us. Well, thanks so Wonderful much for having Wonderful to see you. I'm going to eat that at the break. We'll be right back. Beautiful.
Well, well, welcome back. If you have wrinkles, crow's feet, gosh, I hate that word, or under eye bags, I mean, yes, we all do. There's a beauty product that promises to help reduce some of those key signs of aging in just minutes, y'all. Lifestyle expert Casey Messer is here to explain. Welcome back. Great Thank to see you. you. Always good to see you guys. Thanks for having me. Well, yeah. your skin looks amazing, oh, and I don't so see funny. any of those things under your eyes, so I want whatever you're I, using. Right, okay, so this is Plexiderm, and we know busy moms, I said, if you really want to age, go have a kid because you will look so much <laughs> older. No, the joys of having children I would not give it up. But seriously, you do start to age so much faster once you have a kid. But here's my little secret weapon, this little beauty secret. It's Rapid Reduction Serum. So you just apply a little bit. A little goes a long way. That's the kind of trick when it comes in a tiny bottle. You just need a small amount. So you put a little bit on. And here's the thing. It's going to go to, like, you'll see results in minutes. But the key is to wait the full 10 minutes, which is hard to do. It's really hard not to make your face move while you're right. texting or doing something. You got to wait 10 minutes. So I say, do your meditation while you're waiting for this to set the full 10 minutes. Right. Enjoy the silence yeah, maybe before go. those kids get up. <laughs> yes. And see, we see here our friend Richie Bags. We've seen him for a while using this product. And the before, his bags under his eyes yes. are very significant. Yeah. You know, he was pulled from the office. He's in accounting. And, he, and they said, oh, we're going to using our, you, use you in our commercial. And he's like, oh, this is what I'm getting pulled for. But no, <laughs> Richie's thanking Flexender because his eye bags, which are probably genetic and right. maybe, you know, maybe he does have a couple kids who keep him up, you know, through the years, but those bags just start to disappear. And those three-dimensional ones, which is hard unless you do surgery, but who wants to do that and be going under the knife and the time down? So. Absolutely. And look at, we're looking at before and after photos of this product being used. Again, Plexiderm. And it just takes a minute. But the other thing is, we don't have to just use this under our eyes, right, right. Casey? Yeah, so when Plexiderm first came out, it was just those under eye bags, but people said, well, hey, it does so well here. What if I try my forehead? Or, you know, those when I smile, I have those lines around my mouth. And then the other thing, people are using under the neck, maybe aging. Also, if they've lost some weight, it's under the neck too. And then as you see the guys here, the guys are getting on board with this, you know, because it does dry clear. It comes out, it dries clear, you know, any skin type or any skin tone it works on. And that's what I think is great too. And here's the bottom line. Yeah, ladies we've talked about this forever right we right. always want the next best thing yes. but the guys want to look rested the guys right. don't want to walk around with those bags under their so eyes true. as well and don't we as the girls you know don't we have kind of like that graveyard box in our in yes our, in our bathroom <laughs> where the things go to die we tried it it didn't work but um, we never throw it away we don't, we don't. for some We're reason like, oh, I might use it for something this little thing you know it can be your secret weapon in your purse or we say you know buy one for yourself and your friend your sister or you know the guys too so. absolutely Absolutely. And look at this. We're checking back in here with Richie, the before again. But look at this time lapse. Mm -hmm. It almost looks like he had surgery. Right. Surgery or it's like, hey, did you use some kind of, you know, concealer under the eye? You know, a lot of times you're trying to hide something with makeup, but people have found when they use Plexiderm, you don't have to use the makeup that you once did use. Your yeah. Or you're using up. less. Less. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Let's, we've seen it happen before our eyes. Let's hear the words okay. really from a couple that's using this product. Plexiderm was so easy to use, a little dab will do me. I looked in the mirror and I said, wow, I look like I'm back in college. There's no price for that. Plexiderm, you got a, you got a partner for life. I could have 20 hours of sleep and people always say, oh, you look tired, <laughs> which I'm 58, expect gravity to hit. So when I saw Plexiderm and I saw the advertisement, I definitely had reservations when I first came in to use the product. And looking in the mirror, I can definitely say it's a winner. And I think every woman in America would want to use it, whether they're young. And I've had bags from the time I was 28 years old to 58. And uh, I'll wait till I'm 75 to get the whole facelift, but maybe with Plexiderm, I won't need it. That is truly amazing. I mean, we've seen the transformation before our eyes. We're hearing the testimonials. The other great thing, you know, we sit in a makeup chair. We have makeup artists hide whatever it is that we need to hide. But makeup artists are now loving this right. product as well. Yes, you can use this with makeup. Wait the full 10 minutes, apply to a clean, dry face, and use oil-free moisturizers and makeup. And then just lightly, you know, be very light as you apply it. Because it is like this matrix effects of the lifting and tightening. Of yeah, and again, you don't need that much makeup. And let's hear from Sandy, who's a makeup artist. 
Hi guys, my name is Sandy Marinesi. I'm a professional hair and makeup artist. And one of the number one question that I always get in my chair is, can you make me look younger? So we had a few people that we applied it to and some of them at first I was like, oh, I don't know if this is gonna work. And I was so impressed how fast, efficient, and how well it really worked. Now I could really say to people, yes, I can make you look younger. Okay, yeah, I want to sit in her chair <laughs> know, immediately, right? right? But this is what she's using on all of her clients, which is so great. Mm -hmm. Let's check back in with Richie. We yeah. saw the beginning of the time lapse. We are nearing that 10 minute mark, and mm -hmm. oh my word, he looks like a different person. Yes, he really does, you know, and, and he, we told him not to smile because that's the thing. You gotta be still when you apply this, wait the 10 minutes, but he was so happy. He's like, man, you know, where did they go? It's like right. this, it's this Botox in a jar. It's this miracle in a little jar, this little serum. And here's the thing, if you don't want the expensive injections or you're thinking I don't want to put anything like yeah. that in my face that's the yeah. thing you don't need to worry about that this even bridges the gap a friend who's a marathon runner her Botox eight weeks and it's gone so this can be your you know bridging the gap if you can't get to the doctor's office as much as you kind of want to so right. you know if you don't want to go under the knife don't want injections this is your little secret yeah because it metabolizes quicker in everybody's body let's talk about the special offer I know okay. that you have for our viewers I mean, paying full price is so 2019 we've got 50% <laughs> off for our viewers you know we love you guys we love coming here so it's plexiderm.com and you can you know get a bottle for yourself and for your best friend absolutely yeah. share the wealth by the way guys to learn more about this and to get in on that special offer call 1-800-923-7063 or simply here's the easiest thing to do log on to plexiderm.com that's where you can get your full order and get that one for your friend too go. casey thanks for making Thank us you. look young and amazing mom's gotta stick together right? yeah girl because yeah. we're like operating on no sleep and we look good right Thanks. it's all because of this it's great to see you. see you. We'll be right back. Mmm, oh. my food is so good. What? My food is so good. Oh, you're talking with your mouth full again, mm, right? Right. See you tomorrow. Mm.